Steelers fans, whether you like it or not, Matt Canada is going to be the offensive coordinator for the Pittsburgh Steelers for the remainder of the 2023 season. According to a recent report by the Athletics' Diana Russini, Matt Canada's job is safe as the offensive coordinator for the Steelers here in 2023. And if you think Mike Tomlin is making a big mistake with this move, spam F Canada down there in the comment section. I want a thousand F Canada's on today's show. That is my goal. And with that, let's get into today's show. Today's Steelers Talk video is sponsored by RexMD. Go to RexMD.com slash chat for 95% off generic Cialis or Viagra today. Now, let's talk about this recent report here from Diana Russini that the Pittsburgh Steelers organization and Mike Tomlin are currently not considering firing Matt Canada for the remainder of the 2023 season. And according to her, if a move was going to happen, it would have already been made. Diana said this in a recent article. The Pittsburgh Steelers have no plans to fire offensive coordinator Matt Canada or turn the play calling over to another coach on the staff, a person familiar with the situation shared this week. I was told if a move was going to be made, it would have already happened. Though the fans have criticized Canada and his play calling, Steelers players and coach Mike Tomlin have continued to show him support. I was told the team held a meeting this week to come together and search for some answers as they approach the bye week. Now, if this report is true, and I have every reason to believe that it is, this is straight up coaching malpractice by head coach Mike Tomlin. I mean, the numbers that we have seen and the production that we've seen from the Pittsburgh Steelers to this point is simply unacceptable. And to not even consider firing the offensive coordinator at some point this season, I think it's just absolutely ludicrous. And it shows that he's just he's just too loyal to some of these guys. Sometimes when people just aren't getting the job done, you got to let somebody loose. And these numbers show that, man. I know the Steelers are 3-2 and two right now, but this offense is among the worst in the National Football League. 30th in points per game. 30th in yards per game. Uh, bottom half of the league in third down offense and then dead last in red zone offense, scoring touchdowns in just 28.6 of their red zone trips so far in 2023. This is just absolutely unacceptable numbers here. If, you, if you're the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers and you say and you preach the standard is the standard here in the Steel City, how are these acceptable numbers for your, from your offensive coordinator who's in his third year, who's had multiple opportunities, who most fans wanted to fire after last season? I mean, I just don't understand the thinking here from Mike Tomlin and the Steelers organization, but I do think there's probably a rationale to it, and I'm going to explain what that rationale probably is uh, here coming up on today's show. But first, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Rex MD and fellas, do you sometimes lack confidence in the bedroom? Do you wish you could have a more fulfilling sex life? Well, you're not alone in that. That's why we're excited to tell you about Rex MD, the online source for men's wellness. Rex MD offers an easy and discreet way to get the medication you need for ED without having to visit a doctor's office. With just a few clicks, you can have your medication delivered straight to your door and at a fraction of the cost of a traditional pharmacy. RexMD's team of licensed physicians will work with you to find the right treatment plan, and their medication is made right here in the United States of America, so you can trust its quality. Plus, their customer support team is available 24-7 to answer any questions or concerns you may have. So if you're ready to take control of your sex life and say goodbye to ED, head on over to RexMD.com slash chat and start your consultation today. Take advantage of their best deal they've ever offered and get up to 95% off RexMD plus a free gift with our exclusive link, RexMD.com slash chat. Go to RexMD.com slash chat for this limited time deal. Starter packs of generic Viagra or Cialis are now available for our listeners to get started. That's RexMD.com slash chat for up to 95% off. That's RexMD.com for up to 95% off your order today. Now, from Mike Tomlin's point of view here, the Steelers organization point of view of why they're going to be keeping Matt Canada here in 2023, I think it's more of a blaming the players kind of situation over blaming the coach, right? I think rather than blaming the coaching, the play calling, all that sort of stuff, they're going to blame the execution on the offensive line and the quarterback to this point in the season. And listen, I can understand this rationale. I might disagree with it, and I'll tell you why I disagree with it in just a second, but listen, man, this offensive line has not been good, right? I mean, the highest grading player on this offensive line is Broderick Jones, and he's only played in two games. Isaac Sayamalu is the highest ranked 
uh, player on this on this offensive line. He's only ranked as the 27th best guard. This is simply not good enough. And Dan Moore Jr., uh, the starting left tackle, he's he's graded even worse. He's the worst graded offensive lineman on this offensive line right now. It's just an absolute mess on the offensive line. That's granted. And then also the quarterback play of Kenny Pickett and the fact that he's not getting it done is also granted. Right now, according to catchable percentage, he is dead last in accuracy right now. 29th in on-target percentage, so take that for what you will. But overall, 26th in big-time throw percentage. He's just not getting the ball uh, down the field as much as you would like him to. And, you know, the one thing that he does, that he has been doing pretty well, is he's been uh, protecting the football there. 11th in turnover-worthy play percentage at just 2.7. But then overall value here, that points above replacement number that I always bring up, that's the number that NFL GMs and front offices use to, to determine the value a player brings to a football team. It's dead last in the National Football League among NFL starting quarterbacks at negative 12.2 right now. This is simply not good enough. But, you know, as bad as Kenny Pickett has been this year, as bad as the offensive line has been this year, I mean, the, uh, plain and simply, it's on the offensive coordinator as well. I mean, of course, it's a combination of the two, and I'm not, I'm not here to excuse the offensive line execution or the quarterback execution. Those points are absolutely valid. But every time I pop on the Steelers' film and I watch their offense, it's at least six or seven times a game, I am saying that call in that situation is not appropriate. It's not okay. Whether it's four verticals in the red zone, whether it's a pass from shotgun on fourth and one when the run, when the run game is going. I just don't think Matt Canada as a play caller has any situational awareness and that's putting this team in a position to fail. Now, of course, if you fire him, it, you're, you, it's not like you can implement a whole new offense midseason, right? So I think that Mike Tomlin's probably saying, let's have continuity for this year, and if we need to make a change, we'll do that. But overall, man, I just don't see this coming to a positive resolution here unless you replace Matt Canada with somebody that actually knows how to call an offense at the NFL level and call appropriate plays at the right time. Now, let me know what you guys think down there in the comments section. Who do you blame more for the offensive struggles for the Pittsburgh Steelers so far in 2023? Do you blame the coaching staff and Matt Canada, or do you blame the players for a lack of execution? Type C, if you're blaming more the coaches over the players, but if you blame the players on the execution more than the play calling and the coaching, type P down there in the comment section. Now, another thing I want to talk about today is I've been going around the league and looking at some of these players that the Steelers let go in recent off-seasons, and most of them this off-season, that many Steelers fans thought absolutely sucked, right? We got rid of them, and now they're actually playing pretty darn well with other teams, right? Steven Nelson, right? I, one of the highest-graded corners in the National Football League this year with the Houston Texans, an 80.2 PFF grade. Kevin Dotson, somebody that Steelers fans said was a complete bum last year, wanted him gone immediately, immediately goes to the Los Angeles Rams and puts up a 79.0 PFF grade. That is the third highest in the National Football League among guards right now. Arthur Mallette, somebody that did not play well with the Steelers last year, immediately goes to the Ravens, Puts up a very good grade there of 75.9 in some limited action. And then Robert Spillane, somebody that was a backup linebacker behind Devin Bush and Miles Jack. Both guys not performing well whatsoever. And he's got a good grade with, with Las Vegas right now at 72.6. He's on the up and up. And then Akella Witherspoon, another guy. Uh, that the Steelers saw promise in, but they ended up letting go this offseason. If you watched him play against the Arizona Cardinals here in week six, I mean, he was absolutely fantastic. He is balling out there in Los Angeles. And it makes me wonder here, is this on us? Is this on the Pittsburgh Steelers coaching staff for not developing these guys and their potential? And I'm starting to think it might be. I'm a believer in Mike Tomlin's coaching uh, you know, ability, his ability to get guys to play beyond their means, to play for the team, to play for him, to play for the culture, to play for the fans. You know, the ability to get the most out of his players is certainly there in Mike Tomlin. But at this point, with all these guys leaving and, and them getting massive success elsewhere, I'm starting to think the supplemental coaching, the positional coaching, the coordinators here in Steelers are just not cutting it. And it's probably among the worst in the National Football League. Do you agree with me on that? Let me know right now by grading the Steelers coaching staff down there in the comments. Give me an A, a B, a C, a D, or an F, and grade the Steelers coaching staff as a whole. For me personally, I'm going to give them a C-, and the only reason why it's that high is because I believe in Mike Tomlin's ability as a leader of men. I think that that's absolutely 
uh, uh, shown itself to be true. I think we've seen that throughout his tenure here in Pittsburgh, but I don't think he's surrounded himself with the best people. Terrell Austin, I mean, goodness gracious, he said that Joey Porter Jr. isn't ready to be a starting NFL corner. I mean, have you watched him play? I mean, goodness gracious, he's the best corner on this team. Matt Canada doesn't know that four verticals at the seven-yard line in the red zone isn't an inappropriate play call. I mean, what are we doing here? And then all the positional coaches, I'm seriously worried about this because it doesn't matter who the Steelers bring in on the offensive line. It doesn't seem like Pat Meyer, the offensive line coach, can develop these guys. So I'm worried about the position coaches. I'm worried about the coordinators. And the only element of this coaching staff that I'm actually okay with is the head coach. But at the end of the day, who's the guy that's keeping these position coaches and coordinators around? It's the head coach. So overall, I'm going to give it a C-. minus. But overall, you know, <laughs> the, the optimism that I have in this coaching staff to develop talent is definitely starting to wane. Now, before I go, I do have some final news items I want to cover with you guys, starting with uh, the AFC North roundup here for week six. Of course, the Steelers did not play. They were on bye. But all other, all other teams in the AFC North ended up getting victories here. The Ravens ascend to first place in the AFC North with a win over the Titans in London. The Browns upset the undefeated 49ers at home with a score of 19-17. to P.J. Walker was their starting quarterback for that game, by the way. And then the Bengals won a nail-biter versus the Seahawks, 17-13. to And now we look at the AFC North standings here uh, for 2023. Steelers came into the week, first place. Now they're not. They're sitting at second at 3-2. and two. The Ravens go to 4-2 and two and take back the lead uh, in the division. Uh, but the Steelers still have that... Uh, that tiebreaker versus the Cleveland Browns because they beat them in week two. But watch out for Cincinnati too, man. They're winners of two straight. Joe Burrow's looking more and more healthy as the weeks go on. So right now you got to kick it in high gear, especially offensively. And the Steelers are definitely hoping that the addition of Deontay Johnson, getting him back in the lineup here is going to be able to do that. And we got some good news from Pittsburgh today as he returned to practice and he's looking like he's going to be able to play uh, on Sunday versus the Los Angeles Rams. And what this is going to do for the Steelers' offense. First of all, it gets Kenny Pickett his go-to weapon on third downs. When he needs somebody to get open and to trust somebody to get open on those third down situations when he's going up against man coverage, Deontay Johnson is that elite route runner that can get the job done. It op also opens up opportunities for George Pickens because he's been getting doubled a ton with Deontay out of the lineup, and you're not going to double-team George Pickens, at least not as often, with a route runner like Deontay Johnson on the field on the other side. And then also Anthony McFarland, third string running back and kickoff return man, returned to practice on Monday. It's looking like he's going to be able to go. And hopefully this means that the Steelers can finally cut Gunnar Olszewski from this football team. I think on every single cut candidates video I've done here on the channel over the last months, over the offseason even, I had Gunnar on my list. For some reason, the Steelers haven't done it. They kept him on the team this year. And even despite massive struggles this season, muffing punts, fumbling the football as a receiver, not getting open on when he's, when he's in as a receiver, all these different things. He is not a good football player, folks. And now that you have your kickoff return man back, I'm hoping that they'll finally cut number 89 from this roster. That'll be it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for all of your support. Make sure you click that subscribe button for me right now. We got a bunch of great Steelers content coming your way later this week. So make sure you click that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all the latest surrounding the black and gold.